What is up, ladies and gentle nerds? It's your boy Graham, also known as Hamhawks42 on the internet, and today is the final day of Corset 21 Spoilers, and today's episode is brought to you by that incredibly exhilarating feeling that you get when you get done recording a 15-minute podcast only to find out that the file's been corrupted and you have to redo. But hey, that's cool, man. Reshoots are fun. Anyway, so today we are going to be looking at two cards that have been that, that have been spoiled for Corsa 21, and specifically, I want to focus on these two cards because I suspect other people aren't talking about them, because yes, Nine Lives is insane, but you know that, I know that. Like, definitely check it out, I'm going to definitely brew with it, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. I specifically want to talk about two cards that I had a particular reaction to when I read, uh, because they took me back to a time when I first started playing the game over a decade ago, and in different ways, you know, and so I saw them from two different per different perspectives. One, not so great. The other, totally awesome. And I want to talk about it. Um, so, the very first one that I want to talk about is Rise Again. So, Rise Again is a card that is standard, re it, it's reanimation, just straight up. It costs four and one black, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Now, the reason that I want to talk about this particular card is because it's not good just just bottom line this card is just not great it's very expensive and it's very limited and in this current age of power creep i am very disappointed to see a reanimation card like this get that kind of treatment like i love reanimation i think it's phenomenal it's a strategy that requires a certain amount of setup it requires a certain level of finesse to create the right situation that you need and it has the potential of if you can pull it off circumventing the rules in a very powerful way and getting very large creatures very very fast now when you have reanimation spells that are all very expensive, like Rise Again here, you're not really getting that big of a value. If you're actually able to get an 8 or 9 cost creature into your graveyard, which that alone is not incredibly easy to pull off. Like, believe it or not. Like, not in any consistent way right now. Because right now, the only, I think the only Grave Tutors right now are Grave Bear Gravebreaker Lamia, I want to say, and I think that costs five to put it onto the battlefield. So even then, it's not consistent. So your best bet is to just mill yourself and hope. And, uh, you know, hope is not a strategy. It's just not. So, yeah, I just, I, it's not. So I don't think Reanimator is particularly strong right now. And given the power creep everywhere else, I was very disappointed to see that Reanimation didn't get some kind of a bump. I personally believe that this card, exactly as printed, could cost three and it would still be viable. And the reason that I believe that is because they actually do have a version of this card that costs four. It's called Zombify. This is a card that has just been a staple card in a lot of newbie decks and just, it's just reanimation is this is just straight up reanimation it costs four for the exact same effect you take a creature in your graveyard and you put it onto the battlefield now i have a whole mess of zombifies just sitting around i keep them around because i like them because i like reanimation and it kind of feels fun that like all oh, these are these reanimations like it's just a straight up reanimation staple like it just it it does the thing i like but the truth is, I have multiple reanimator EDH decks, and I don't have a single Zombify in any of them, because it's too slow. This costing at 4 is already too slow to be viable in the most casual eternal format that exists. And so you give us one of the most souped-up powerful standards, and you print a version of it that costs 5? What? Like, anyway, that is... This is me harping on something because it's not what I want it to be. There's nothing wrong with Rise Again as a card design. I want a, re a reanimation strategy to be viable and standard. Wizards apparently does not want that right now. And I can't say that I blame them. Although, with how quickly and easily we can cheat stuff into the battlefield right now, I feel like jumping through some hoops to fill it into the graveyard actually, if anything, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. That just adds an extra step when you could just fetch it out of your library with Luca. Anyway, so... Reanimator is clearly just not designed to be the powerhouse that it used to be, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it bums me out personally. That's all. <laughs> That's all I'm saying here. I'm not saying that they're doing anything wrong with this. It just, it, this is a flag post, um, or it's a sign post. It is, they're planting a flag saying that reanimation is not going to be powerful in this standard. It just isn't, and I don't doubt that for a second, and I know it 
because I look at this card. It's right here. No question, reanimation is not going to work in the standard. Okay, now we know. And, um, yeah, it's disappointing because we've had a couple of other, like, interesting five-drop reanimations recently in Cauldron's Gift and Bond of Revival. Both of those cards had unique, fun ways to get additional value at that five-drop. So it kind of made up for the fact that it was really expensive and late in the game to try to reanimate something. But, anyway... All that is to say, in limited, this card is probably going to see some fringe use. It's not going to be great, but it is splashable. So if it's in a, if you're in a strategy that is milling or that is allowing you to discard cards, being able to discard into, you know, being able to discard a fatty early and then being able to pull it out of the graveyard late, that's always good. And if you have some really awesome creature, this is a way of protecting it if your opponent manages to destroy it. So, okay, like in limited this card may have a place outside of limited this thing is not great as a drink coaster like that's about as far as it goes like this is just going to clog up space in your in your shoe boxes um which i mean it's common so it's a bulk common so why am i complaining about a bulk common they know it's a bulk common it was designed to be a bulk common well i'm complaining because i want my reanimation deck dang it that's all that's all this is. Anyway, so that's Rise Again. <sighs> now, happy stories, happy memories. These are the, the, let's move on to something that I want to talk about because it's fun. Back in Kamigawa, that was one of the first, the Kamigawa I think was the second full block that I was there for. Because um, I was there for, I mean, back in the day, they used to develop sets in blocks, meaning that there were three sets on a particular world. And uh, they moved away from that philosophy for a number of different reasons. Certainly nothing wrong with that. But there was something about being around for an entire block as it rolled out that was really special and fun um i can see why why they again i can see why they made the move nothing wrong with it but in kamigawa they had a series of enchantments called the hondans and they had a subtype of shrine and they activated on your upkeep and just did something good you know the blue one drew cards the black one forced your opponent to discard cards the red one dealt i think like two damage um but you the effect multiplied for every single shrine you had now it's very important to note they're legendary so you couldn't have multiple of the same color shrine so it would be really easy to just if you're running a burn deck just throw four of the red shrines in there but fortunately they're legendary so you can't do that so if you're really going to get value out of those shrines you need to have a lot of different ones on board back in the day when the hondans first came out they were all they were cyclic uncommon and i think there was one rare five color one um and I remember looking at them thinking, that's a fun design, but I'm never going to play these. Meanwhile, my dad, who I had gotten into the game around that same time, looked at them and thought, hmm, I'm going to build a five-color Honda deck. And I remember telling him, dude, you're stupid. Like, that, that, like straight up, there's no freaking way that's going to work. That's idiotic. Um, in not quite so colorful language, because I was talking to my father after all. But still, it was like, dude, there's no way that's going to work. I would seriously not bother with it. You're just going to be wasting your time, and you're just going to end up getting frustrated. Um, we didn't have particularly great mana bases, and so it was just like, why in the world would you build five colors? Like, that seems almost like a novelty more than actually a functional deck. And I mean, eh, if you want to build novelty, whatever. But he sat down with uh, one of our buddies, um, my buddy James, actually, who was the one who introduced me to Magic the Gathering. So huge shout out to my buddy James if you're out there, my friend. Thank you. Um, but he and my dad sat down and they put their heads together and cracked the code on this thing. And they actually put it together. Note that Kamigawa was also the block that brought us Kodama's Reach and Sakura Tribuilder. So those two pieces were clutch for getting the mana base to really pop off on this thing. And holy cow, did it pop off. So I went from being the guy who was looking at my dad's deck going, that's the silliest, dumbest idea ever, to being the guy on the other side of the table just chowing down on some crow as he just continued to blow me out of the water over and over every single time his upkeep rolled around because he'd get five of those things on the freaking field at a time and just like when you're sitting down at the table and he's like okay well i'm gonna deal 10 damage to your face i'm gonna draw three cards you have to discard your hand and it's just like well all right neat like i guess i'm gonna play a I, I, like i'm gonna go ahead and discard my daru war chief and be bummed like you know like it was a beating consistently that deck was incredibly powerful and i was a hundred percent wrong um on it and it was fun like i had a really great time being wrong on that because i also got to watch my dad go mad scientist and build something that was truly insane well 
this last historic anthology on Arena brought us the Honden Cycle. And when I saw those, I was really excited because it reminded me, oh, this old deck that my dad built, I could build some version of that in historic. That's pretty cool. Well, guess what? In Corset 21, they're bringing shrines back for the first time in like 15 years or whatever. They're here. And I, so I just, for right now, I pulled up Sanctum of All, which is the five color shrine. So it's cost Wooberg, one of each color. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may search your library and or graveyard for a shrine card and put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. And then if an ability of another shrine you control triggers while you control six or more shrines, that ability triggers an additional time. You guys, this is bonkers. This is truly insane. And we have a brand new cycle of shrines for this thing to go grab. So even if you're not playing historic, a standard shrine deck could be viable. And on top of that, now there are even enough shrines that if you wanted to build a commander shrine deck, heck, go for it. Why not? There are eight of the things now and something that fetches them. Like, this is insane, you guys. And I'm just over the moon about this. This is going to be so much fun. Like, so much fun. Seriously, like, think about a five-color deck with maybe, I don't know, Gigantha as the commander. And put Sanctum of All and like five or six tutors that can fetch up artifact or such fetch up enchantments. All of a sudden, this thing is just it, it's insane. What you can do with this is gonna be absolutely nuts. Like, I can't wait to see this in action just across formats. This is gonna get silly, full on silly. And so all of a sudden, certain cards that we've seen recently that really hate on enchantments, like um, or the Barrier Breach for Mycoria makes a whole lot more sense now, because that's one card that can destroy three enchantments. And at first, like, okay, this kind of came out at a time when Theros is legal and standard. All right, there are enchantments running around. That kind of makes sense. But now looking at it, it's like, oh, no. That is sideboard tech against the shrine deck. We're going to see it, you guys. We are going to be seeing a standard and a historic shrine deck. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. So, Dad, this one's for you. The the Hondans are back, and they are better than ever and they're going to be coming to a twitch stream near you twitch.tv slash hamhawks42 if anyone wants to check that out after of course the 21 drops we are for sure trying that deck i can't wait this is going to be so much fun you guys and the cool the coolest part about that deck is it just like sits around and then on the upkeep just explodes and so it's just like i'm not really going to hold back you know I, you could have some counter support i guess but the majority of the deck is going to be really focused around getting those shrines in play um and so you, it's going to be the shrines ways to tutor the shrines way to ramp for the shrines um so you're probably not actually going to have that much of it I mean, that much in the way of like control magic or anything like that but all in all like i'm excited I'm really excited for this. The shrines are here. They're back. Let's have some fun. So yeah, this is the, this has been the last um, spoiler for Corset 21. Hopefully this particular recording uh, is not corrupted the way my last take was. Um, if not, I'm just going to continue sitting here talking about how, how cool and not cool these two cards are um, for the rest of the night. But hey, it's all good. I can't think of a better way to be spending more time than I planned um, than talking magic cards with you guys. So thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, yeah. Stay good to each other, and I will catch you next time.